Welcome everyone to the Level Up Your Career Summit. We're really excited today to have Lucille Osai with us from Nigeria. And I am going to just turn the time over to her for a second so she can tell us about herself. Today we're talking about communication. Communication is critical in leveling up your career and she is an expert. And so Lucille, tell us why we get to listen to you. Tell us, tell us how you got to be the communications expert you are. Thank you, April, and fantastic summit, by the way. It's really, really relevant in today's atmosphere. So I stumbled into this field, believe it or not, by accident, yeah? I had always been somebody interested in reading and writing, but it wasn't until I was a stay-at-home mom uh, many years ago that um, I just started writing about communication because it was a field I was passionate about. And the more I wrote, the more I researched, yeah? And then I, I met a lot of amazing people. And then I landed a job at the uh, Lagos Business School, which is one of the top business schools uh, in, in Africa and ranked globally as well as a communications coach. So that just cemented my position. And then I started working with uh, professionals and executives and MBA students and so on and so forth, just helping them to communicate better one-on-one -on -one, interpersonal communications and uh, relationships and communicate effectively in speaking and in writing. And mm -hmm. I just took it off from there and became thoroughly obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm obsessed with business communication and it's everything that um, I've been doing for Basically, I've been blogging for about 10 years, every month wow. for about 10 years, and just on communication, management, career, and so on and so forth. And after a couple of years, my blog got ranked by Feedspot. It was the only African-based blog that appeared at the top 40. And then a couple of blog awards followed from other organizations. And I just kept on doing what I did, just sharing insights of what worked for me and what I know works for other people, best practices in communication, and uh, I'm really happy to say that for the first time this year, Global Gurus ranked me the number five communication professional in the world. Yeah. So I was the only African to appear there. So minorities note that you can communicate effectively and you can communicate your expertise, your passion and everything about you to get the results that you seek. So that's why I'm so excited to be here. Uh, last year, I also published my book called Influence and Thrive, which was all about communication, all about how professionals, business leaders, and corporations could use effective communication to get results. That's why I said I'm obsessed. So good. <laughs> so good. Obsessed. And congratulations, yeah. by the way. That's really exciting. Thank you. So, Thank you. so communication, to, like why, when it comes to leveling up, you know, I think yeah. a lot of people maybe think of different things like skill sets, like, I, oh, I need to go out and get an MBA or I need to go out and get, you know, why, why can communication trump all of that? Why is communication so important when it comes to leveling up? This is a fantastic question because especially for those who are ambitious and who want to get up the career ladder, I've often heard a lot of professionals say that the higher you go, up the ladder, the less important your technical skills become, the more important your soft skills become. So we're talking about collaboration, communication, emotional intelligence, and so on and so forth. And what I've found, and if we count the, the jobs I had and when I started my career for over 20 years now, what I've found is that communication is the one skill that you will need across all sectors. It does not matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're in the field or in the office, you need to be able to communicate effectively in speech, in writing and one-on-one -on -one to get the recognition you want, to coax action, to move hearts and to persuade people to uh, your point of view. And that is one way that you can stand out in your career. Trust me, I lecture MBA students. They are very, very um, knowledgeable about what they do, executives. I also facilitate sessions with corporate clients and so on and so forth. And communication skills are critical. They are mm -hmm. highly, highly demanded. So what I would like to encourage everybody is that 
you might not always be the person that has the most advanced degree or the technical qualifications, or perhaps you came from a poor background or a disadvantaged background. But if you can communicate effectively, you differentiate yourself from your peers, you get noticed. Absolutely. Yeah? I loved what you, you said noticed. about moving hearts, because yes. especially today, I feel like that, you know, like Gen Z, for example, it's really important to them to be yeah. involved in a mission. Yes. And so if you are a leader and you've got this workforce of Gen Z coming in, mm -hmm. being able to move hearts is really important to engaging this new part of the workforce. So I, I love yeah. that. I love what you said, just being able to move hearts as part of your communication and that alone mm -hmm. differentiates you. The, then Absolutely. you don't have to be the top of your class. You don't have to have the best right. GPA, but right. clear communication is going to be a huge differentiator. Absolutely. 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 So, how, and, so now the question is yeah, how, so. right? Everyone was yeah. like, okay, I want, yeah, I want that. I want that. Now how? <laughs> okay. So communication is broad. I, I basically divide them into the whole field into three or four aspects. Yeah. So you have the nonverbal communication, mm. so body language and so on and so forth. Then you have the verbal we have this oral, the, the speech, so public speaking, presentations, speeches, and so on and so forth. Then you have interpersonal communication. So if you were to go on um, networking events, if you're going to go meet people, you know, wine and dine and collaborate with people, the skills that you need to exhibit to get people to trust you, you know, interpersonal communication as well as nonverbal communication. And then you have the writing. Yeah. So tech, so roughly into three, four groups. And um, for each segment of the business communication, there are rules and best practices and tips and techniques that you can learn. Yeah. So, for example, nonverbal communication. So we are doing this conversation via Zoom. Yeah. But there are things that I would need to be aware if I'm communicating with somebody virtually. I would need to be aware of where I, you know, where my eyes are, my eye contact. So right now I'm looking directly at the webcam and it's mimicking face-to-face -face meetings. Now, if I were to look at myself, which would be like that, and I'm talking, April, this is a very good summit. You can right. see the disconnect, yeah? Right. So I'm ignoring myself, my picture, which is somewhere right. there, and I'm looking directly into the webcam. And that helps you exude confidence and it, it helps people to trust you because, oh, this is person is communicating with me one on one. And it doesn't matter if there's so many people in the room. So that helps. And then the gestures, for example, though, am I coming across as open? And again, there are best practices. For example, I'm showing my, my hands. Yeah, I'm not just saying, oh, hello, April, it's really nice to meet you and all that. But I'm gesturing, okay. I'm looking at the camera, I'm smiling. I'm making myself open. And this is critical if you are um, doing virtual interviews, job interviews, for example. Yeah, you want to create that connection with the other person and you want to demonstrate the fact that you are trustworthy and you're open. Because if you're open, then you're more likely to be credible and likable. And people remember those people. Yeah, so that's, that's, that, that's that. Then the speaking, am I pleasant? Am I speaking clearly? Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't need to have a Western accent for you to understand me. Like I'm from Nigeria, I'm African, but we have no problem communicating. Right. Yeah. Right. So just knowing how to speak, knowing how to vary your tone so you don't come across as monotonous, like, hello, April, it's good to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> There's no energy, nothing. Right. Yeah. But oh, hello, April, it's fantastic to be here. You know what happened to me the other day? I'm already engaging. So knowing how to vary my tone, not to vary my pace and how to speak clearly and audibly. Yeah, I might be a bit of an introvert, which I am. Mm -hmm. But if I'm communicating, for example, virtually via Zoom on one on one, I have to ensure that I'm heard, I'm audible, I'm unclear. And sometimes that means knowing how to vary your tone, knowing how to use pauses to get your point across. Yes, and uh, knowing how to speak in a way that makes you appear more knowledgeable about what you're saying. So that helps. 
and then there's the writing, which which um which uh, I might not be able to demonstrate here, but basically clear writing also makes you stand apart. So there are best practices and the tools and the techniques that you can learn to tweak your communication skills so that you get those great results, you get noticed, people yes. begin to believe exactly what it is you're selling, whether you want a don donation for something or you want to gather support for a worthy cause, because you mentioned Gen Z, they have to work in an environment that does meaningful work. Otherwise, you know, they leave. Right. You know? So if you are right. in a C you're a business leader, a CEO, and you're not even communicating in a way that moves hearts, they, they, they don't feel connected to your mission and you, you seem very unapproachable, then they're not going to work for you. They're going to go for, yeah. you know, your competitors. So, so it's really important. If I'm a manager or, you know, any of these scenarios and I, and I've, let's say I've received feedback that yeah. I'm not very good over zoom or that people are, you know, that I'm communicating something that I'm not intending to communicate. Right. What are some ways I can improve just that small aspect of my virtual communication, which is so prevalent today, you know, yes, so prevalent. Absolutely. Yeah. Listening, listening and being, um, increasing your situational awareness. Now, when you're in a Zoom meeting, a lot of people, the shy, you know, and those ones that be quiet, they may not want to speak. But if you take a note of if the cameras are on and you sort of observe their body language and someone is doing like doing that or someone is doing that or someone is doing this all the time or someone's trying to stifle the yawn, you know that you're talking for too long. Yeah, you're, you're, you've been talking for way too long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, way too long. And it, it gets worse if it's after lunch, if it's at 3 p.m. Or, or just before. <laughs> yeah, so you may just need to switch. So hmm. there, there's a general recommendation, and I, and I address this in my book as well. If you're speaking for up to 10 minutes, you need to stop and introduce a break, especially hmm. for Zoom. And this break could be anything. It could be asking questions, yeah? It could be introducing an activity like okay i've spoken for way too long i would love your opinion on xyz why don't we do a quick breakout session mm -hmm. put you into breakout rooms just five minutes just let us know what you think yeah so that energizes something because that is a break and that is a change in the pattern and your brain loves novel things loves changes like that so little things like just switching to another speaker, for example, or introducing some sort of multimedia, maybe a video, short clip or a statistic or something, asking questions, making a statement and asking somebody agrees or, you know, these are ways to just get people to be, to be uh, interested in the session and to be energized to, um, to take it forward. And just also noting that there, is such a thing as Zoom fatigue. So keep your overall meeting as brief as possible. Short, you know, yeah. They don't need to be yeah. two hours. The meetings <laughs> don't need to be that long. You know, 30 minutes, I think it's fine. Maximum, maximum an hour. One session for um in the business school that I lecture, one MBA session is 75 minutes. Wow. Yeah? And after 75 minutes maximum, it doesn't matter what it is. And then if you're going to have a double session, you have to have a break in between. And in the seven type five minutes, you need to engage the participants. Yeah. Cause there's such a criterion known as, um, uh, um, engagement, you know, so class participation. So you need to trigger something. So if you are a manager or you're a, a supervisor and you need to lead meetings, a good rule of thumb is to ensure that you don't speak for longer than 10 minutes mm. at a yeah. time on without doing something else right <laughs> doing something else no that's yeah. that's huge that's huge I mean it yeah. sounds so simple but a lot mm -hmm. of times we don't even realize when we've been talking for 10 minutes you oh, know what yeah. I mean it's like I I noticed that when I'm in that place of like you know in a public speech situation like at church or work or what have you yeah and sometimes you know it's like oh it's already been, you know, you just kind of, sometimes you kind of lose track of time. And so, mm -hmm. um, and, and you and I talked about this offline, but it may, yeah. maybe now would be a good time to bring it in that practice element, because you become, you said becoming aware. Yeah. And yeah. so becoming aware of 
Yes. What it, what it feels like when I've spoken for 10 minutes and learn how to communicate that same message in five, which yeah. takes practice. It takes effort. It's, it doesn't just yes. come to you. Like you said, we're not, most of us aren't yeah. born with it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a skill that you can learn. And I think, especially if you are leading a meeting and then everybody has his or her camera on, you can pick up on vibes. Yeah, because non-verbal cues and are difficult to hide, except you're being intentional about hiding them. And it can be exhausting. So you will pick up on something. And then if you notice, especially if the group is small, if you notice that somebody hasn't really spoken, you know, you could just say, oh, that um, I would like different thoughts. Um, Jessica, what do you think? Or Peter, is it is this does it, does this sound like something that would be beneficial? You know, based on your experience, or oh, you are heading your unit. What was your um experience the last time? Do you think this would be useful, or do we go ahead, or what do you think? And then monitor also the chat, yeah, section because mm. and because not everybody will be comfortable speaking. So at the beginning of the meeting, just say, look. I would love your participation, but I know that it's not all the time you like to speak, but please, please put your questions or your comments in the chat and then monitor that chat, monitor it. And, and okay. to me, this is a fantastic way um, to get everybody involved. And if somebody makes a suggestion in a chat, you can say, oh, John, oh, fantastic suggestion. You know, you know, who agrees with that? Should we, should we, or John, can you clarify? And then he's uh, empowered, yeah? He maybe right. did not want to speak, but he's been, his idea has been validated. So he's going to be empowered. John is going to say, oh yeah, I thought about this because I thought this could help, you know, and then you're having a very worthwhile conversation. So if you are a supervisor, a leader, and you really do not know how to lead, and but you have a clear idea of where, um, of what the meeting is going to be, just ask questions. Ask questions, invite people to, to, make suggestions, and then you can do a recap at the end and then take a decision on whether you're going to move forward as the leader or whether you still need to um, consult other people. So it's a, it's a skill. It's, it's a skill. Yeah. And one thing I also wanted to mention is that it has little to do with your personality traits. Mm -hmm. So you, and this is something I get quite a lot in my work, you know, people approach me, they go like, oh, and I'm introvert. I don't really like speaking. How best do I do it? And then when I share in class that I'm an introvert, I get gasps. I hear gasps. I, people are like, what? <laughs> and I was like, it is true. My family, they think I'm the greatest fraud ever because they can't understand how I can move from being quiet and in my space to being on stage and to teaching and to, you know, and we, we have a laugh. My siblings and I, we have a laugh about this. And they're like, my goodness, we know the truth. But that's the whole point. <laughs> that's the whole point. You're, you're more than one version of yourself. You have different versions of you. Yeah. So the way you are with your family might be different from the way you are at work and so on and so forth. So everybody has it in them to communicate the truth, their ideas in a clear manner. They just need help. Just tweaks mm. here and there mm -hmm. to make it work. When you said something earlier too about one thing. You know, so in these settings, like in, in, a, in a meeting where, mm -hmm. you know, you've got, you know, let's say 10 people or 15 people in the meeting and lots of people are kind of speaking out and you're that person, you're that introvert, or yeah. maybe you're not, maybe sometimes you have a desire to like contribute at every single point that's made, but you said something really powerful earlier about one thing. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. Tell me about that. Okay. So one way you can still gain quite a lot of visibility for yourself is to challenge yourself to make one clear point in the meeting. Yeah. Preferably, preferably towards the end. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're in a meeting and you're the quiet one and your colleagues are very loud and extrovert, it becomes really tedious to try to cut across, to try to get your what, and then you feel that, oh, they have all the ideas. Yeah. But if you make up your mind to make one clear point, and another thing that happens is that perhaps what you wanted to say has already been addressed by everybody else. So you're like, oh my gosh, that was the, the one thing I was confident enough to say, but, <laughs> but John, John, or Mary 
has said it. What do I do? And I need to speak. I need to speak. You could you could do a recap. Yeah, you could do a recap. So based on everything. So what is the way forward? This is the this is what the majority of us have thought about this idea. How do we move forward? Who does that? And that will make you almost a rock star because uh -huh. you could have different people making contributions, but there hasn't been somebody to pull everything together. Yeah, to make a final recommendation, even if you're not the head, even if you're not the, the leader of the meeting, you know, like, so what are we saying? What is our final decision? And then you could invite the leader, like, you know, the leader's name is um, April, like April, you know, this is what we've all discussed and everything. This is what I think we should do moving forward. But what do you think? Perhaps we need a bit more time or what is your opinion? Yeah. And if you make that toward the end, it's going to be remembered. It's yeah. going to be remembered. I can I can envision as you're saying that I can envision that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like that guy or yeah. gal who ends the meeting and just wraps it all up, be like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even even letting even letting the team leader know that you're running out of time and that you would appreciate it if everybody just wraps up and then just <laughs> or summarize it. Yeah. <laughs> So even if, yes. even if that's the only thing you do right? <laughs> in the entire meeting, it will be remembered. Really will powerful. Be remembered, trust. Really yeah. powerful. And so how about in writing? Because now we've kind of covered yeah. like the speaking aspect and we've talked about some of the nonverbal. What about in writing? Because so much of a, you yeah. know what we do is emails or yes. memos or, you know, yeah. like you said, presentations or reports or you know those types yeah. of things so yes. tell me a little bit about how to be powerful in writing okay so here's the thing about writing and funny enough writing concerns about writing effectively is the most prevalent concern that i get in my work hands down is always writing so i usually recommend three rules the first rule I say is to consider your audience. So consider the recipients because the, the person you'll be writing to determines the tone you're going to use, the style you're going to use, the vocabulary and so on and so forth. Um, and depending on your the culture of the land or the company, you may need to use a little bit more formal language and style if you are communicating with the highest up. For mm -hmm. example, if I were to, if I work for a big company in Nigeria, multinational, and I were to write to the CEO with whom I'm not very familiar because I haven't been in his circles often, I'm not going to call him by his first name. So if his name is, um, is Jessica, if his name is uh, John Williams, I'm not going to say, he hello, John. I'm going to say, good afternoon, Mr. Williams. Yeah, so I'm going to know what tone to use. And generally, the more unfamiliar the recipient is, the more likely you need to write in a more formal tone. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why considering your audience is really important. And for the Generation Z, I know the language is a bit relaxed and so on and so forth, but you have to realize that if you are going to be reaching out to decision makers across regions and so on and so forth, you cannot write to them in an overly familiar manner because it can cause disrespect in certain cultures. It might be considered inappropriate and so on and so forth. So just taking that time to consider your recipients right. would help you know the kind of style you're going to use. So that's and the first rule. Err on the, the side rule. of being more yeah. formal and then yes. err on the side of being more formal than not formal enough. Absolutely, absolutely. What you don't want is to appear too familiar when you haven't built the relationship with the person by exchanging uh, correspondence or emails over a, a certain period of time. So absolutely, so knowing that. And then the second rule is to keep your writing simple, brief, and clear. I call them the three rules, the beacons, yeah? Simple, brief, and clear. So no matter what the uh, reason is for writing, keep it simple. Explain it in a way that a 12-year-old would understand. It does not matter if it's advanced technology. It really does not matter. I mean, Einstein was once rumored to have said that if you can't communicate simply, you don't understand it well enough. Hmm. I may be private, but it's, 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 it's really, really true. 
So keep, keep your content simple, whether it's an email, whether it's a pitch or whether it's a report, just keep it simple. Use simple terms, easy to avoid. The beacon number two is to keep it brief. Very important, <laughs> very, very important because the decision makers, they do not have the time to read lengthy reports and so on and so forth. They'll just skip, they'll skip through those cards. So just keep it brief, get to the point. And the final one is to have, um, to keep it clear. And I often get um, questions. So what's the difference between keeping something simple and keeping it clear? And I say the difference is the call to action. Oh, yeah. okay. Because you are writing for a purpose, mm. business writing. You want something done or you want to, either you're writing to inform somebody about something, you're writing to refute a claim, you're writing to ask for something. But basically you're writing because you want somebody to, to feel something, to think about something or to do something. Mm. So that has to be clear. So you wouldn't just write a report and make sure you follow all the rules. It's grammatically correct. It hits on the right point and you just say, thank you. And then you send your report and then your boss reads it. I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> right, yeah? right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But what do I do? Because you didn't just say, I would like to lead this project. I would like 20% increment in the budget for the department based on everything I've written mm -hmm. and what I think will benefit the company. So you have to be clear. So keep your writing simple, keep it brief, keep it clear. And then the final rule is editing and proofreading. This is what separates your content from everybody else's. You could have the best of ideas. You could have everything, the data and all that. But if you are not able to proofread thoroughly to ensure that your grammar is on point, that your sentence structure makes sense, that your points flow logically from one paragraph to the other, Reading your document, your email, your report, your memo or whatever is going to be tedious. Yeah, it's going to be tedious and the reader is going to be distracted by grammatical errors or by the wrong use of words here or there and just the flow just being off. So knowing how to proofread and edit your work would make sure that your overall piece is persuasive and moves you forward in your goal. So that those are the three rules that you're, then you have... Um, the need to basically update your grammar, which I think is really important because you need solid grammar and, or, and uh, a good knowledge of punctuation to be able to write crisp content that would um, give you the results that you seek. But if you keep those rules, very, very brief rules. First yeah. rule, you know, know your audience or recipient. Second rule, keep your writing simple, brief, and clear. Third rule, edit and proofread thoroughly. If you follow these three rules and you apply them, your writing is already going to be sharper than the next person. Right. So, so if I yeah. start, so for me, let's say the, the most simple thing would be learning mm -hmm. to edit. What's one editing tip you can give me that would help my emails, would help elevate yeah. my emails? Okay. So one tip, but with a bonus. <laughs> the, first, <laughs> the first one is to read your emails word for word. Emails, reports, whatever it is you're writing. Because sometimes we just write type and we're easy to send. And then we send out like, oh my goodness, there was a typo and all that. So read word for word, yeah, each and read audibly. Because oh, okay. it's, and yes, this is really important for reports that you worked on for maybe days or weeks. You basic, your brain basically is used to the content. So it would not catch errors. And that's why it's sometimes you give your report to somebody else and within a few seconds, they're like, oh, this doesn't make sense or this is a typo. And you've seen that document a hundred times. Yeah. And you, you did not, <laughs> you, you did not, you did not discover the, the, the error. So it's really important. So read your work word for word. Yeah. Okay. And another great tip I give to people is to install Grammarly. Grammarly is a free resource. It's like an editing resource to restore it. And then you can sync Grammarly with your web content, with the Microsoft Office. So if you're, if you're writing for, for the web, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all that, it will help. And then um, it's also very good at catching some errors you might otherwise not realize. So mm -hmm. that really helps. So read okay. word for word and install Grammarly. Okay. Those two help. And what if I'm, I know I'm too wordy? you know, but I don't know how to, yeah. I don't know how to be succinct in my communication because I think yeah. everything I'm saying is so important. You know, it's like, well, I can't leave that out. 
how do I how right. do I improve you know that aspect of my writing? Okay, so it's it's a muscle you can build, and depending on the audience, like the recipient, there'll be some recipients who would like details, yeah, yeah. who would like details. So you may be working for a boss who likes everything in, and likes the details mm. and, and stuff like that. You have to basically make sure you do all that. But one way you can still be concise, even if you're providing very critical information that needs to go in the report, is to first of all, start getting rid of clutch words. Mm -hmm. Then so, so that, you know, just get rid of um, them, okay. get rid of uh, adverbs, which it moved slowly or painstakingly and all that. And just use stronger, okay. yeah, just use stronger verbs. You just use stronger verbs. I'm very hungry, I'm ravenous, for example. Um, um, she was very, very angry. She was livid, you know, just try and Got shorten, it. use more verbs, less adjectives and just get rid of those little words. Yeah. And then ask yourself, you know, ask yourself what is critical to go in this email and report, not good to know what is critical to know. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to know information. You can keep it, you know on the side and this is also important for public speaking and presentations but the critical information you need to put in yeah so put yeah. yourself in the shoes of the recipient if i were the recipient what is the critical non-negotiable information that i need to hear i call that the foundational question in my book mm -hmm. so ask yourself the foundational question and when you narrow it down everything else you know you can discard and you become clear that you just a matter of tightening tightening your content right. and using stronger verbs getting rid of adverbs and so on and so forth got it and I, then, that's yeah that's so simple again you know it's it's not rocket yeah. science but sorry yeah. I, I interrupted you you go ahead say finish your sentence there <laughs> no no, 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 no. That's, that's fine. That's, that's all I wanted to say. So, so that it, would help. It's mm -hmm. really simple, but um, one, you know, I think some of us too expect that it's going to happen overnight. Like I'm going to become a good writer uh, yeah. overnight. And yeah. so some of these things, I'm, I might not be good at it now, yeah. but like you said, it's like a muscle. Yes. And yes. so just to kind of wrap everything up, how, you know, what does that kind of look like over time? Yeah. What does it look like at the beginning? And how do I know when I've gotten to the point where I'm really landing my communication? Okay. So I've been blogging for over a decade, every month for over a decade. And uh, if I take into consideration my first job, where I had to write, I was I was graduating my twenties. I was thrown into this commercial role for a foreign embassy in Nigeria, and I was in charge of articles. Like I had to learn on the job. So twenty years ago, and ten years of blogging. What I can tell you is that it takes time, but you will see noticeable improvements in your writing. Yeah, it may not happen overnight, but it will happen if you continue if you if you continue to work on it and you will know you're improving <laughs> i tell people when the, the especially with your writing when you begin to notice mistakes that other people make mm. you become a bit snobbish you become <laughs> you know you become like even on, size, even on tv oh like oh no that's not right oh a comma shouldn't you should have used a semicolon no a comma is just off <laughs> when and believe me you will become insufferable people close to you will like what is on with you you know mm -hmm. uh, and a few people have confided to me people who have been they said i said that is a sign that mm -hmm. is a sign that you are more aware of constructions and your grammar and and all that so that is a sign another sign especially at work is that people begin to seek you out yeah, they go like, oh, please, could you just quickly wrote the all? I want to say this, but how should I say it? And you find out that it's very, very quick for you to make suggestions. Yeah, very, very quick. We're like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to cancel that. You need to bring this up here and so on and so forth. So you become the unofficial go-to person when it comes to writing and, you know, speaking and so on. Even though you are still improving your skills, but people have noticed that you... um you produce quicker content. Emails are, you know, very, very persuasive, very short, very concise. You know that. And then it becomes easier, especially for writing, for you to write, to tweak your writing for different audiences. Yeah. So if they tell you, oh, you need to write to the governor of the state, 
what would have filled you with dread <laughs> in the past will be like, okay, I just need to structure it. You know, I need to know his name. Okay. I need to be very concise. I need to know why I'm writing to him. And I have to make sure X, Y, Z. And it becomes doable. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is that you are still improving. So it's, it's the journey, not the destination. Right. Even at this stage in my life, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning. I connect with a lot of um, interesting people on LinkedIn in different fields. I'm, I'm not an expert in nonverbal communication, but I connected with a, an amazing nonverbal expert called Mark Bolden, Bolden. And he wrote the forward of my book. And in two years, I learned a lot about nonverbal communication. And I teach that now in my yeah. sessions. I didn't know about it. I just had a vague idea about nonverbal communication, you know? So you begin to improve and you connect with people and then you learn, you learn and you learn and you learn. And then it's, but well, you have to have, you have to be disciplined. That is the only thing that will make you better over time. You must be disciplined. Mm. You can just say, okay, I've been doing this for like two years, three years, five years. I think I'm good. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Because perhaps you have a new generation after Gen Z. I don't know. There'll be probably Gen A, Alpha. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know. I, where I, don't don't know. <laughs> I don't know where to go after that. But perhaps mm. they need you need to communicate to them in a different way, you know. Right. And you need to know how to 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 connect with them in a different way. So language changes, communication evolves, but you need to stay focused and you need to be disciplined. So it's impossible for me to give a time, but people really begin to give to see results after three months, especially with the right tip. If they follow the trip, they, they see it because there was um there was a, a recent participant who reached out to me. Um, this is an MBA executive MBA participant, and uh, she told me that in a module called management communication, they were meant they were made to blog every week. Mm. for the for the course i think the course lasted three months they were made to blog every week for three months and she said that her writing improved tremendously during that period and of course being the coach i had i like okay fantastic so are you still blogging and it was like no i was like why <laughs> why should you just continue you know so so yeah, right. if you if you if you keep at it you will see results you're beginning to see results in your writing and people will notice at work so notice that work got it as well yeah. yeah and and I loved what you said too like that's again kind of tying it back to what we said at the beginning they'll notice yeah. your communication if you're if yes. you're moving hearts then it's yes. not about you being the best of the best absolutely as far absolutely. as you know the like you said the hard skills and then the the more you move up that yeah. ladder yeah. The less the the less the technical skills come into play, and it's yeah. more about your leadership, which yeah. starts with communication. Absolutely, absolutely. So for the younger generation and for people maybe mid management or they want to go higher in their career, it's good to upskill in different areas of your of, of of your career. Of, of course, right. it's good to do that. But please don't neglect your communication skills they would really set you apart. They would set you apart. And you begin to, to be chosen. They, you will be chosen. They're like, oh, you know, you know, Mary here or Mary from that department. It might not even be your department. They're like, oh, Mary from accounting. Oh, she 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 wrote an email once and it it made sense. Oh, go go meet her, you know. And before you know it, people and this is this literally happens to me. Yeah. People will reach out to you sometimes in other in from other departments. And if you work in um in a company where collaboration is appreciated and where it's necessary for you to connect with other people you people be in other departments begin to talk about you when you're not there mm. yeah so in uh, behind closed doors they're like oh what about april in that whatever but like oh but she's not a, she's not a technical person yes but she gave that presentation i think we should bring her in and then opportunities arise and all that. and then you could be singled out they could just say, oh, you know, oh, you gave a good presentation. You know, I think you should give uh, this presentation to our corporate clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then perhaps that is the field or that is the department you've been wanting to get into, but you've not had the opportunity. So the communication skills will open those doors for you. Mm -hmm. They will speak loud. They will speak loud. Whether you're in the room or not, they would really speak, wow. especially the writing. Because writing, people forget sometimes when you say things. 
but when it is i wouldn't say etched <laughs> in a space <laughs> but when it is by email or report it's almost it's there and really? people can refer to it and it's there and it's yeah it's representing right. you well right yeah. that's, a great that's why this summit that's why this summit is fantastic it's really fantastic because it's 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 addressing a need for us to know how to level up and how to get ahead get ahead you know and I'm, there are different aspects that you can tackle mine is just communication but it's mm -hmm. really really a, a relevant topic that I think everybody would find useful not just people mm -hmm. wanted to ascend the career ladder business leaders as well right they may be listening they right maybe listening yeah and they need to know they need to know how to communicate as well to Absolutely. get those results to share their vision to just rally the troops to walking towards a common goal they yeah. need to be able to touch hearts they need to be able to persuade people in speech in writing and one-on-one -on -one. absolutely so, absolutely super important so if people want to, we had talked about on the speaker page here where they click to get your interview, there's a free gift. So tell us about that. Tell us about what's in that okay. gift. Okay. So that is chapter four of my now best-selling book, Influencer Thrive. And it reveals a technique. You know, we talked about nonverbal communication. Yes. It, re it reveals a technique called the scan, this, the scan method. And it is something that Mark Bowden, who I mentioned earlier, who wrote the forward of my book, who's also um, an expert in um, nonverbal communication and human behavior. He devised the scan system. I don't want to give everything away, but basically this is a system, a very, very easy system that you can use to help you ascertain whether somebody is being truthful or not. It gets mm -hmm. you closer. Nice. It's not for you. Yeah. It gets you closer. Yeah. It gets you closer to the book. And you can use... Yeah this system in high stakes situations. So situations where, you know, we're talking about congressional hearings, if you're a business leader or um, a press, uh, what do you call them? When you stand in front, in front of a press, a press uh, oh, press conference, press conference, exactly. Or a press conference and, and, and all, all those things and stuff like that. So it just helps you know how to navigate those high pressure situations okay. and Get closer to understanding what someone may be thinking. I think a, very, job very difficult. a job interview is high stakes. That's yeah. kind of what I, came to my mind, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. That sounds, so, that sounds so, fun. It sounds I like, like kind of, yeah. you know, like spy work, but really yeah. it's important to understand mm -hmm. in, in a lot of situations. Like I, like I said, you know, job interview came to my mind because it's high oh, stakes. Yes. It's high stakes. Manager. Exactly. But it's also exactly. high stakes for the for the potential employee too. To uh, you know, yeah. what I mean? like there's some high stakes exactly. there in both of their cases too. So exactly. That's and in, awesome. in, in in that chapter as well, I provide a practical scenario. So it's not just all theory. So I provide right. a practical scenario. You can imagine yourself the lead character in that scenario. And you're like, okay, you know, awesome. next time I'm faced with this problem or this situation, I wouldn't be too quick to judge. I will note this can S C A N. Got it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, that sounds fun. I'll, and I'll I'll yeah. go I'll go click on it too because I you know I need that. <laughs> um, and so finally, you know, we had talked about the fact that you also do one on one coaching. So if someone is really you know knows they need to level up in their communication again, whether like you said, middle management or whether they're up here and they need to rally yeah. troops you know, yes. they need to improve, improve their bottom line or revenues or whatever the case may be. It yeah. applies in all those situations. So if they want one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, same thing, I assume, you know, just go to your website and, you yes. know, tell us, tell us just how to get in touch with you. Okay. So it's just the easiest ways to go to my website. So okay. www.lucilleoutside.com. I'm sure it's going to be in the, in, in the notes. Yep. And then all the information is there. You can connect with me also on social media, or you can go to the services page and then you see all the services. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do training, I do speaking, and I do communication advisory as well. So easiest way. And, and then you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm super active on LinkedIn, always sharing communication insights. My blog is there, multi-award winning blog. You can sign up for free. Um, um, and it's really, it's really interesting because now people are reaching out to me on publications and said, Oh, I, I went to your blog. I like this. Mm. Would you mind us republishing, repurposing or republishing mm -hmm. your articles? 
so there's everything there. So if you just go to my blog, Rethinking Business Communication Blogs, which you can get through my website, you know, and just go and just type in a keyword in the box, it's public speaking, writing, interpersonal communication, whatever it is, you yeah. get a relevant art article loaded with tips, techniques, and information to help you level Love up. It. Your communication Love it. Love it. I wrote, I wrote down a few things that I'm going to implement today. So hopefully this, right. was, this was helpful <laughs> for the viewers and, and everything like that. Again, simple, yeah. you know, but it, it just helps so much to hear it mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and to hear that encouragement too, that, you, oh, yeah. you don't have to stay if you know you're not good at something you can improve this is something Absolutely. that you can improve and yep. Yep. and doing so will level you up level you up get and, you noticed yep make you influential yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lucille. Again, thank you. amazing. Thank you for everything you've shared with us. This has been very generous and, mm -hmm. um, and I've loved it. So hopefully the viewers will thank too. You. I hope they do. Thank you so much for having me and fantastic summit, by the way, congratulations. A very, very relevant topic. Thank Extremely you. relevant. Thank <laughs> you. Well done.